Hello and welcome to the digital event towards the full recognition of LGBTI rights across Europe, strategic policy measures to implement the 2010 SOGI recommendation. This event is organized by the German Federal Ministry for Family Affairs, Senior Citizens, Women and Youth, together with the Observatory for Sociopolitical Developments in Europe. My name is Caroline Ausera. I'm a journalist, moderator and diversity trainer. I work at the National Council of German Women's Organizations, Deutscher Frauenrat, as a policy advisor on international gender equality. And I'm very glad to lead you through this day today. Now, soon, I will have the honor to welcome uh, Francisca Giffey, Federal Minister for Family Affairs, Senior Citizens, Women and Youth, as well as Maria Pecinovic Budic, Secretary General of the Council of Europe. So, dear audience, there is also a big thank you from the organizing team and a big thank you to ILGA Europe and the SOGI unit of the Council of Europe for their support for this event. And with over 350 registered participants, we can see there is a big interest in this topic. So, um, we are now waiting for our two first speakers and they're arriving in this minute. So, a, a moment of patience from you. And um, I can already see the minister, so please, Wait with me one second more. <laughs> so, hello, thank you, and I'm very honored to welcome you today, Francisca Giffey, Federal Minister for Family Affairs, Senior Citizens, Women and Youth. Thank you for being with us today. Hello. Thank you very much, and kind regards to all <laughs> who are watching us. <laughs> And here I also see Maria Pecinovic Buric, Secretary General of the Council of Europe. Also a very warm welcome to you. Hello. We kick off with a short interview talk, starting with our host today, Ms. Giffey. So last year Germany held the presidency of the Council of the European Union. Now we are at the end of the German presidency of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe. So how has Germany been using these pre presidencies to advance human rights and why is the focus of this conference on the recognition of LGBTI rights in Europe? Yes, yeah, so we here from the Ministry for Family Affairs are very much focused on the LGBTIQ community because we think it's really important to have um, the rights in the focus. And uh, during our presidency um, for the Council of, of the EU, but also uh, for the Committee of Ministers for the Council of Europe, we um, have tried to focus uh, these issues very much because we think the visibility of, of lesbian uh, people, but also also the acceptance and the, the, the question how we can, from the political side, put a, a focus on that is very important for us. And uh, we also think of our rainbow families we have in Germany. We, we try to um, understand families as uh, people who take care for each other. And um, it doesn't matter um, who um, is um, in, in, in the family, but uh, the, the important thing is that um, we fight against discrimination, we fight against violence and we try uh, to um, enforce the acceptance also of rainbow families and that was very important for us and um, 11 years now passed since the Sochi recommendation and um, now uh, these recommendations um, are really a milestone in the fight for the LGBTI rights and we want to build on this success and we want um, to place uh, once more of a focus on this important issue. Question to Ms. Buric. We talk today, we will talk today about the SOGI recommendation, the groundbreaking SOGI recommendation of the Council of Europe from 2010. The title is Recommendation on Measures to Combat Discrimination on Grounds of Sexual Orientation or Gender Identity. So this was the first agreement between governments to specifically address the human rights of LGBT people in Europe. So although not legally binding, it's based solidly on existing legally binding human rights obligations. So, and it has established the gold standard of LGBT rights in Europe. 
What has the Council of Europe further contributed to LGBTI rights and where does the, this famous um, SOGI recommendation fit into that? Please, Ms. Buric. We cannot hear you. One second, please. One moment. <laughs> Ms. Buric, sorry, we, we hear from the technical side. We cannot hear you. One, one second, if you just um, could give us a moment to arrange this... Uh, Technical problem, I'm sorry, with the digital format, this sometimes happens. So, can we go on with Ms. Buric or? We, we still cannot hear you, Ms. Burridge, so should we go on with Ms. Giffey instead? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ms. Burridge, we will, um, we come back to you in a moment, okay. so I, ah, oh, now I can hear something? Yeah. Is, is it fine now? Now, yeah. thank you, and sorry for this uh, technical <laughs> problem. Ms. Burridge, please. You yeah. have the floor. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I want to start by pointing out that today's event is one of several on LGBTI people's rights that uh, have been organized by the German presidency of the Council of Europe's Committee of Ministers. This is a real testament to the priority that the German authorities place on making progress on this, uh, these issues at the European level. And they are right to do so because ensuring the LGBTI people are treated with equality and with dignity, guaranteeing their full enjoyment of the human rights to which every European is entitled. This is one of the challenges of our times. And it is a battle that is by no means uh, fully won. That said, it is important to be clear that progress has been made. The starting point is the European Convention on Human Rights. Among other things, it guarantees the right to life and private and family life, security and protection from violence and freedom of association, expression and peaceful assembly. It also bans discrimination. Every individual is entitled to those rights by law. And over the years, the European Court of Human Rights has issued landmark judgments that have ensured LGBTI people's access to them in a range of areas. Among other things, these have resulted in the decriminalization of same-sex relationships, the legal recognition of same-sex partnerships, and the requirement to end the forced sterilization of those transgender people who seek that recognition. These things are also set against the backdrop of real change in our societies. Many European governments have legislated for same-sex marriage and partnerships and to allow LGBTI people to adopt children. And there has been positive progress in tackling bullying, violence, and employment issues too. This has been the product of strong political leadership and the increased visibility of the LGBTI people and uh, issues. Equally, I'm proud of what all parts of the Council of Europe have done to ensure that rights are respected. The Parliamentary Assembly, the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities, and the Commissioner for Human Rights among them. Their work has been inspired by the Committee of Ministers' adoption in 2010 of a groundbreaking recommendation on discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. The first such instrument to specifically address the human rights of LGBTI people. It draws from the principles of the European Convention and the case law of the European Court. And it guides national authorities on what they should do, ensuring 
equality and counter discrimination. This put an onus on governments to act, not simply to keep LGBTI people safe and secure, vital though this is, but also on what they should do to ensure that they have fair and equal access to the education, health, housing, and more on which they can rely. Thank you very much. If we focus on progress and setbacks, Ms. Giffey, if you look at the situation in Germany, what has changed since the SOGI recommendation was issued and what are the current challenges in regard to LGBTI rights? I think there has been made concrete progress and um, we have in general a more um, more awareness I think in, in the society for all these issues and we have a recognition of same-sex marriage um, in Germany since uh, 2017 and um, we had the ban on surgeries on intersex children um, that is currently in the parliamentary process. So this is um, a very important issue, what we discussed about uh, with the community here in Germany. And I'm very glad that we have <coughs> this, um, this act also in, in progress now. But of course, we also see uh, some, some um, setbacks and we have to worry about it because um, the number of assaults against LGBTI people are on the rise. So we had... Um, from 19 uh, from from 2019 to 2020 about um, 36 percent um, a, a rise of, of the assaults which um, increased uh, in fact and in Germany we want to respond to such developments um, through different measures even by the government and one is um, our big funding program Live Democracy which is um, uh, supporting organizations who fight for demo democratic process and for, for the strangers of um, democracy in Germany and uh, we, we provide the Within this program, Live Democracy, uh, a 1 million euro program, which is a new competence center against homo and transphobia. And we have all over Germany a network of people who engage for that and we support them in their work to fight against homo and transphobia. And um, we also see, of course, the setbacks in other member states. And I think this is a concern that we have to address. And um, I think the 2010 recommendation is um, a basis for this, but we have to further develop it as well. Thank you. Uh, further question to Ms. Buric. So there are still many reports about challenges to LGBTI rights in, in different areas of Europe. For example, the anti-LGBTI rights movement is getting, movement, movement, we have to say, is getting stronger and gaining momentum at the moment. How can we make sure that the recommendation is really being followed, that its measures are being implemented across the 47 member states of the Council of Europe? As I mentioned earlier, the recommendation has resulted in good things happening. But there is no doubt that the progress we have seen is not evenly spread across Europe, nor can we blind to the reality that in some countries there is clear backsliding on the commitment to LGBTI equality. For example, hostility to LGBTI people and their rights is being stoked by populist hateful rhetoric, or sometimes even from high-profile politicians. Authorities sometimes fail to protect public events, such as prides, or even ban them altogether. And there are examples of countries adopting new laws in line with our 2010 recommendation, but then lacking the political will required for implementation, failing to disaggregate the data required to assess the situation for LGBTI people and the failure to ensure the resources and awareness needed to embed real change. In fact, there are also examples of countries that simply do not respond to the recommendations periodic review questionnaire. Questionnaire that is designed to identify gaps and help member states address them. This undermines our capacity to move forward. Similarly, the Council of Europe's most recent analysis of that review uh, process found other real problems that need to be addressed. Uh, most importantly, there is often a clear gap 
between what national authorities say on the one hand and on the other, the findings of reports by our monitoring body, ECRI, and by civil society in this. So I'd like to add another question to you, Ms. Buric. Uh, we've talked about the problems now. There's, there are several more, I'm sure, that need to be addressed. But what could be the solutions? You know, what could be done? Could be, for example, one idea could be an incentive to cut public support uh, to repressive actors that are not in line with the SOGI recommendation, for example. Or do you have other proposals? Yeah. Well, we, we have re reflected heavily on that. Uh, so for, for moving forward, we have asked the European Governmental LGBTI Focal Points Network to cooperate with us on the development of on further uh, guidelines guidelines that will strengthen the next implementation review of the recommendation. These will address both the methodology of the review and how national authorities should supply meaningful and standardized uh, content. Within that next implementation review, there should also be an annual focus on a theme or themes from the recommendation. And this thematic approach would focus on selected member states uh, with the active involvement of civil society. So by doing this, the review can look at more issues in greater depth uh, with wider engagement by national institutions. And this is about uh, developing a better, fuller picture of where our work on LGBTI equality is falling short in practice, so that we can provide the proactive support required to raise uh, standards. And of course, ultimately, political will uh, is required for that, and I hope that we will see that. Uh, the same must be said for the general policy recommendation that ECRI plans to draw up in the years to come. It will take account of changes in the human rights issues facing LGBTI in what is a fast changing world. And it will apply our long held principles and our experience over the years to help map out ways for national governments to address these. This may be challenging for some governments and for some people, but we believe it is the right thing to do and because LGBTI issues are not abstract or ideological. This is about individuals having the opportunity, the right to live in freedom, happiness and equality. When societies accept and welcome difference, everybody wins. So the individual who feels accepted and confident to contribute to their community and the community itself benefits from what each person has to offer whether that is in personal, social, or economic terms. This is the destination. Let's redouble our efforts and keep moving forward. Thank you very much, Ms. Buric. Now the last question to you, Ms. Kifai. What needs to happen to make further significant progress? So if we come back to the title, which strategic policy measures do we need to achieve full recognition of LGBTI rights across Europe? Mm -hmm. I think three words are maybe important for that. The first one is cooperation, the second one is attention, and the third one is really visibility. And we have to um, focus on all these three words to uh, fill them with life. I think it's very important that when, on the European level, um, the EU and the Council of Europe work together and they do that and they give the framework for that cooperation. But even the cooperation in between the member states is very important. And we have uh, tried to use our uh, presidency last year and this year to, um, to, f to focus and enable um, and to improve that cooperation between the different member states, even the best practice exchange, what um, uh, does work very well, uh, how to uh, deal with, um, with problems in some fields. That is important to have this exchange and this cooperation. And the second one, attention. We have to bring this issue on the agenda and we have to make um, meetings like this. We have to uh, try to bring all these 
these issues in the public and um, to try to um, make people aware that we still have to do a lot to reach what we want, an equal society and a diverse society, a very um, on the future um, orientated society. And for that it is important that uh, we need a society without discrimination. And only if we uh, more and more put the focus on that and pay attention to these, um, these things, we can reach more. And the third one is really visibility. And um, I think um, we sometimes I have political discussions where people say, okay, don't, don't worry so much about minorities. Yeah? Uh, but I think it is important because we can only have a society which is really strong when we look on the ones who are on the minority side, who feel not seen enough. And um, our task is to make them visible and to make them heard. And even, and especially in the pandemic situation, where we see that many people um, have a big, um, big problems to, to, to deal with that difficult situation, it is even more uh, important that we um, take care that minority rights are safeguarded and um, that they are seen and not uh, get lost on on this uh, on all these issues we have to to deal with now during the pandemic situation. So um, I think policy has always to be concrete and. Uh, what we think, what we have to think about is how we can make political decisions that are really um, able to to make a difference between um, what we are doing here and what is really changing in lives of people. And um, I think we have to be very clear, or even on the European and also on the federal and national local level, that discrimination against people. Um, from the LGBTI community is absolutely not um, to be tolerated. And um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to his the flag uh, again also this year in front of my ministry, the rainbow flag, which is showing that we make, we, we pay attention and we make this visible and we cooperate um, with others who are also um, sure that these issues are important for a, for a society which is, um, which is capable to handle all the challenges of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you both uh, very much for this very insightful talk and a very different way of starting a conference, as I think. So thank you again and uh, let's move forward in our program. And kind so. regards to Maria. All the best to you. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm all very the best. I, I, feel, I feel good to see you. So all the best for your important work for all over Europe. Thank you thank very you. much. See you the same. And good luck for the conference.